the creditors are not willing to finance the current account deficits any longer. Uh, too much unsustainable debt result, resulted out of this. To give you one example, compare Greece with Turkey. And I think it's a very good comparison because these are very similar economies with sim similar products. But Turkey's market price is determined by the market. I mean, the exchange rate is determined by the market. Greece is 61% more expensive than Turkey, if you look to the OECD purchasing power parity figures. Portugal is 43% more expensive. In order to be on the same price level as, as Turkey, that requires uh, a real devaluation of Greece by 38% or of uh, Portugal by 30%. Hmm? Why 38? Well, if you are at 161 and want to come down to 100, then you have to take 38% away, then you are at 100. Another calculation of the realignment need by Goldman Sachs, a study which was published this spring or late, late winter, gives the following figures. Portugal and Greece and Spain would have to cut their prices by 30% relative to the Eurozone average. France even by 20%. This is, for me, the most uh, alarming figure which I found there. Italy by 10%. Italy is surprisingly little. Well, they do not exactly measure competitiveness. They measure debt sustainability. And Italy has little foreign debt. Ireland has no realignment need. And Germany, at the same time, would have to go up by 20% relative to the Eurozone average. So these are huge imbalances in the Eurozone in the relative prices that have to be changed. And this is the problem of the Eurozone. Either these realignments will take place in the next 10 years or so, or the Euro will not exist. Because the structural current account deficits that result from the wrong prices will not then disappear. And even if they are there, no one is willing to finance them for such a long period of time. There are three options in principle which one has. First option is we cut the prices in the periphery through austerity programs means more and more mass unemployment. And the difficulty here is prices are very sticky downward. It's easy to increase prices, wages, prices, everyone is happy, but not the other way around. Unions define themselves by having wage increases rather than wage cuts. This, there's another argument. If the wage and price increases came through excessive credit in the private sector, then households and firms are indebted. They have to um, service their debt. You cannot simply cut their prices and incomes in half, say. Then they cannot service their debt. They are all bankrupt. And this is not an external debt problem. It's an internal debt problem. If they have bank debt internally. This is, by the way, the difference between Latvia and Estonia on the one hand and the southern European countries. Latvia and Estonia did go through a process of price cuts, but they had no internal debt. They just came out of communism, so they did not participate in this credit bubble. Those countries which came into the problem through the credit bubble can't go the reverse, can't, can't do the reverse gear. That's the problem. If you nevertheless try with austerity programs, as the EU is currently doing, you drive these countries into mass unemployment to the brink of a civil war. And still, you achieve very little. Keynes had discussed the same problem in his uh, piece on the economic consequences of Mr. Churchill 
in the 20s when he warned Churchill uh, not to uh, go back to the gold standard. You, he said, then we are too expensive, we will have to cut our prices, but we can't cut it. It will mean a mass unemployment because of the unions. But the internal debt problem is another argument which Keynes at the time did not mention. So this path is hardly possible, and if you try it, it will bring about a lot of hardship. The second is we inflate the core. Germany, Belgium, well, Belgium is expensive enough. Uh, <laughs> so, but in order to achieve uh, competitiveness for Greece and similar countries, without price cuts in these countries, Germany would have to accept an inflation of 5.5% for 10 years, increasing its price level by 71% compound interest calculation, meaning that nominal wealth titles will lose 42% of their real value. Are the Germans willing to accept that? I doubt. The third possibility is an exit and depreciation. It's also a catastrophe because there will be a bank run. We see exactly in Cyprus what is happening if you uh, have raised the expectation of an exit. There will be a bank run people try to get their bank out of the, their money out of the banks. And there could be lots of contagion effects, destabilizing the financial system. In other words, there is no solution. We are stuck in a trap. There is no solution. There sometimes there is no solution, even if we would like to have one. And we can only choose mixed strategies, a little bit of everything, or accept the problems with one of these paths which we choose. And it's a matter of value judgment where you think the catastrophe is smallest. Some sort of catastrophe is unavoidable. How much, how much realignment in the Eurozone has taken place? Have we perhaps seen already, after all, in the summer we will have completed six years of crisis. Have we already seen some realignment of relative prices? Here you see the price level of Spain. At well, this point here is set equal to 100. It's the time of the Lehman crisis. You see, before they were inflating, after that, indeed, the prices came down relative to the rest of the Eurozone. So it was a movement in the right direction. But you see, here they would have to go. It's quite a long way, according to the Goldman Sachs calculations. This is Portugal. This is Greece. This is France, this is Italy, this is Ireland, and this is Germany. So these changes in relative prices would in the long run, not from now to tomorrow, in the long run, have to occur in order to solve the internal imbalance problems and make the countries of Southern Europe competitive again. If we want to avoid these price cuts, then we have to shift the whole spectrum upwards by inflating the whole Eurozone. And then the German bar means is so high that we will have our 5.5% inflation. That's what the previous calculation says. 
We can have any combination of these, but I tell you, this, this can be done through austerity programs. That is bound to lead to even more catastrophe in the southern countries. The European crisis has been largely communicated in the press as a financial crisis, as a crisis of a lack of trust, financial instability. Yes, it is a financial crisis after all. But the heart of the crisis is this. The financial crisis is on the surface. It's the pain which the European body feels. And our policies, which we have chosen, financial aid policies and so on, solving the financial instability, is a policy of giving painkillers. It is not a policy of rescuing these countries really and, and fighting against the true disease. Wrong diagnosis, wrong recipe. Of course, for the investors who have invested their wealth in the South, uh, this is not the problem. Their problem is only that they get their money back. Therefore, they emphasize the public debate in the public debate exclusively this financial stability thing and say to the public of Europe, unless you open your pockets and, uh, and pay back instead of the debtors who can't, uh, we will be nervous that we will have a financial crisis and then we will all go under and you with us. That's what the financial markets say in all crises. Which is understandable, but not true. Some portfolios will go under, but not the world. <clears throat> 